behind the cage. Dash to his right and wraps it around for the goal. Lobo O'Reilly over the top. Roy ready. Love shot it. and score. It's around Weed. Off the bounce. Shot and a score. Wow. Levine with some speed. Levine fakes a pass. Levine all the way. He's going to fire and score. Up top, Druin. He wants a shot oh. and he's got it. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, Arbusto. One handed oh. shot. He's up and in. With an extra man. Fulvier sniping. Top corner. Sophomore goes back to it. Enzo turns and scores. Now inside of four minutes. Spelman. Who's the man? Spelman. Spelman's the man. That's who. Clark on the run. Shot and score. Meanwhile, Darkin to the cage. Shot and score. Chase. Extra feed. Shot and score. Game over. Well, hello everyone, and welcome here to Blast Out. Nick and Astis, Roger, how are you getting set for this first round matchup in this 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Tournament between Hollis Brookline and Timberlane. It's the Cavaliers and the Owls on a grass field on a somewhat rainy night here in early June as we get set for a rematch between these two teams that occurred just a few weeks ago. It was a two-goal victory for Timberlane in that game, 8-6. to six. In the meanwhile, both teams have gotten healthy. In fact, Owl head coach Ken Blaskis said it's the healthiest his squad has been since early April. Hollis Brookline, they have caught somewhat fire as of late. They've won 5 of 8. The three losses, Roger, by a combined seven goals against some of the cream of the crop in Division Two, And after what looked like perhaps a missed playoff opportunity early in the season, able to rally and just sneak in as the number 14 seed, looking for an upset here on the road. But all that out the window, as we know, it's survive and advance at this point here on June the 2nd. Yeah, we're really looking at two teams here that have kind of struggled at different ends of the season. Uh, uh, Hollis Brookline, high hopes going into this year. Uh, Coach Dom St. Laurent uh, had these boys going uh, early. Good win against uh, Goffstown to start the season off. And then disaster hits. They run into some injuries. Six straight losses. So in their first eight games, they went one and seven. And then, uh, yeah, you're right. They started getting healthy. Started getting some good uh, matchups out there that uh, put some uh, steam uh, into their uh, team, and uh, you know they went five and three at the uh, at the very end uh, of, of those last eight games. Uh, a big one, uh, even though it was a loss, was uh, to number four seeded Wyndham uh, by one goal uh, before the uh, season ended there, uh, when they finished up with uh, Pembroke with a big win. So uh, full rosters here, as you mentioned, uh, Coach Blaska uh, has been dealing with the same thing. Uh, mid part of the season, he had some uh, injuries, lost Joey Schivel, uh, lost Dan Post for the season. Both those boys were key players for them. Uh, and uh, he's had another injury uh, to uh, uh, a gentleman on his roster as well. Uh, and uh, that's Jake Manning, Jake, recently. Jake Manning, yeah. And uh, uh, so, you know, they've kind of limped into the playoffs. They had a short roster. Uh, to begin with, but in talking with Coach Blaska before the game, he's always enthusiastic, he's always positive, he's ne never ne negative, and uh, I, I think he's going to have his boys ready to go. Timberlane, losers of two of their last three, to your point. Tough road matchup against the defending champions at Portsmouth. That, that was a game you and I were at. Yeah. And then the one goal loss to Wyndham. They did round it out with a big win at Spalding, 17-2 to to close out the regular season. Yeah, and let's not forget that they played uh, uh, Nashua South, uh, the <laughs> the third ranked team uh, in Division One, right? Mm -hmm. Third, third rank is where they ended up, I yeah. believe. Uh, and they uh, lost to them seven to five. Uh, so you know they've had their uh, moments this year where they've been very strong when they've had a healthy roster. And as we know, Roger, the grass field always factors in more and more. It seems like every year with the advent of the turf field, but old school here. A little bit of a dirt patch, a big dirt patch, frankly, in front of each net. Yeah, it looked like uh, the Division I uh, finals right. uh, down at uh, Wrenchler uh, Field in uh, East Hartford. And the one trip <laughs> where we were here earlier in the season, of course, it rained as well when we saw Timberlane match up with Winnicott. What do yeah. you think it boils down to here 
Roger, what does each team need to do? Give us some keys. Well, I, I wish we had more uh, bio on Hollis Brookline. We did not do a game of theirs this year. Uh, it's been hard to follow that team and see who the key players are. Uh, but uh, clearly, this is going to be a game of possession and uh, attrition. See who can stay healthy throughout this game. Uh, I know in talking with Coach Blaska, uh, he wants to push the ball. And I am a coach that, and I was a coach that loved transition. I loved pushing the ball. I loved, uh, you know, getting that ball in the box and uh, not letting the switches on defense happen as quickly as, uh, uh, you know, you would normally see in a, a game that's slowed down. So I, I think uh, if, if uh, Timberlane can play the transition game and they can keep the ball on the field, uh, they're going to be successful today. A growing crowd continuing to file in here. A festive type atmosphere. Timberlane Athletic Director Angelo Fantasia always doing a good job bringing the spirit here to Plastow. All right, we step aside. When we come back, national anthem and then game time. Survive and advance here as the tournament gets underway in Division Two. Hollis Brookline, Timberlane. Coming up next, you're watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. The New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with the Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years' experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of the Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's, it's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land. 
Well, there it is. Timberlane Regional High School staff member Steve Rugaletti with a live rendition of the National Anthem getting us set to go here in Plastow. Nick and ask this Roger Howe with you. It's the first round here in the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division II Tournament. The winner will advance to Saturday's quarterfinal round and take on the winner between St. Thomas and Manchester Memorial slash Central. Those two teams in action tonight. And we'll keep an eye on the out-of-town scoreboard we throughout will. the broadcast as we bring it to you live here in full 1080 HD. The officials, two-man crew, Tim Bethke, long-time official. He's the crew chief, Tom Furley. Got some experience alongside him, so we're in good hands tonight. Of course, both head coaches meeting a moment ago, shaking hands at midfield. Timberlane, led by the fiery Ken Blaska, who was all amped up. I saw him in the parking lot. <laughs> he was. <laughs> on my arrival, upon my arrival, he was he was in game mode. And then, of course, on the other side is, is one of the blossoming young head coaches, one of the better young head coaches in the state, Dom St. Laurent, former standout at Bishop Girton, played college lacrosse at both UMass and eventually ended up coming back home, as you mentioned, uh, Roger, to round up his round out his career at the NCAA level at Franklin Pierce. Yeah, he was one of three um, old Tomahawks players that I coached uh, mm. out of the same class that ended up at UMass. Buddy Carr from Exeter, right? Uh, Jake Lasowskis from Pinkerton, and of course Dom St. Laurent, uh, and they all played. Uh, in fact, Buddy Carr, uh, Kelly Carr, uh, played at UMass's father. Uh, you know, well known out that way. Uh, he was quite a quite a player out there. He had a really good career out there. All right, ready to rumble. Hollis Brookline. They've got their face-off guy back. That's John Paul Turgerson. Turgerson, just a freshman, did not play back in the first matchup on May the seventeenth, and he wins the opening face-off without a problem. Hollis Brookline going to set up on the attack as they work right to left in this first quarter. A grass field here, rain on and off yesterday, rain on and off earlier this morning. But I'd say the field condition not too bad as Hollis Brookline begins things here at six o'clock local time. A good crowd continuing to stream in as we mentioned. Both the home fans who always seem to turn out and a few braving the ride about an hour or so away for Hollis. Meanwhile, a turnover. Cross zone pass doesn't go as planned, and it's Logan Johnson who springs to it. The sophomore defenseman makes a good play for the home team. Now trying to clear out of their own end, though. Zigzag come back near side, try and free up Cole Newman. One of the four captains on the squad, the senior, able to advance it. Now it's in the stick of Ethan Jerry. Another of these four captains, the senior on his way to Plymouth in the fall. Here's the guy you want to watch out for right here, Eric George. Number 11 in white. Number 11 in white. He had uh, three goals in that Portsmouth game uh, we did a few weeks back. And yeah, uh, He always seems to play well when we're in town for whatever reason. A big game player, another senior for Coach Blaska. Alright, Timberlane taking their time here on their opening possession. Now watch the corners here, and in, in speaking with uh, Coach Blaska, he wants to run uh, three-on-twos on the corners here, and they're kind of sitting up in that uh, regard on the far side midfield right now. Bowman, good one-on-one -on -one move, spins. Defender with a good recovery. That's the long pole, Colin McGarry. Senior, one of the leaders on the back end. Here's a shot. Comes from up top, ends up wide, out of the stick of Jerry. Backed up by George. It'll stay here. Two minutes now gone by, opening quarter. Home team trying to strike first. George, little high pass reeled in by Austin Charest. Sophomore, looking to regain his footing, makes a move to his right. Kept at pole's length by the defender, Rudy Rosa. Sophomore for the Cavaliers. Nice patient offense. This is Andrew Morin. First touch for the junior. Wants a one-on-one -on -one here with Jorgensen. Brings Torgerson to his right, finds George behind the cage, swung to the far wing, little jab, but in the end, nowhere to go for Jack Condon, the sophomore midfielder. Condon now going to backtrack, wants to go at Jacob Roy, downhill, senior ready for the challenge, forces him to give it up, back behind the cage. Bowman 
examining his options. And again, tries the spin move, lost his footing. Here comes the slide, the pass, the shot ends up wide as Morin misfires from the near wing. Boy, if he makes that uh, step down, that's a great play and a good recovery there by Bowden. Now three minutes gone by, lengthy trip here for the Owls over 90 seconds. It's an opening. Jerry, there it is. middle shot and score and Timberlake is going to strike first. Top shoulder, top shelf over the right shoulder of goaltender Tucker Luter. Senior let that one fly by. It's one nothing Owls. Boy, it's real easy from up top here to see something open up. And, of course, there it was. He did the one-on-one -on -one at the corner. Uh, had help on the back side there if he got uh, slid to. But uh, the slide really never came, and he was all, all by himself. Was able to extend. That slide came really, really late. So Jerry, after a patient trip, able to strike. Now off the faceoff. Got a five-player pile up here. Everybody taking a whack at it. It's still loose near side. Throwing his weight around for the Owls is Johnson. But in the end, it's Hollis Brookline's Ben Defoe who ends up with it and escorts it to the near side corner. So officially, Timberlane two for two with the X. Yeah, and this is where, you know, a I'm sorry. Hollis Brookline. Yeah, Hollis Brookline, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is where the uh, the field fatigue, as I call it, uh, you know, really comes into play in the middle of the field there. Uh, everything was falling into divots and making it very difficult to ground ball that. This one knocked loose and recovered. It's going to stay here. Good play by the Cavaliers, Colin Corbin. Owl defense almost producing a second straight turnover. Cavaliers hoping to tie it at one. Just over four minutes gone by. Connor Sanborn up top. Here's a shot. Good stuff. Oh, it's intercepted. Great play by the long pole, Gary Shivel. Oh, that's a Shivel. Hoping to draw a flag near midfield. Now just hoping to survive. Gets rid of it on his way to the ground. It's going to roll back to the middle. Again, still loose. And finally, Sanborn to it for the boys in blue. Boy, I thought... Uh Official Fairley was going to pull his flag out. He had his hand on his uh, pocket, but it looked like a hold there on the side before Shivel fell. Letting him play. Up top, shot. Ends up wide, and a good play in net there for the Timberlane goaltender. That's Brady Marston, one of the best statewide. The junior craftily able to stick the stick behind the net and ensure the possession for the Owls. A couple of passes later, they have the clear. This is Kyle Shaw, the senior going to trot along that far sideline. And Timberlane hoping to settle in here on their second possession, the attack after a lengthy trip produced an Ethan Jerry goal. And that's where we are here, one nothing as we approach the midway point of this first quarter. Now, Jacob Roy on, on uh, Hollis Brook line number three, who just took that shot, he's the one to watch out for. Another one-on-one -on -one move as Jack Condon let it fly. And then paid the price. Looked like he was knocked down after the shot. Takes a moment to gather himself and get back to his feet. Yeah, that's uh, Ken Balaska. Says he's going to have to key in on number three and uh, really maybe slide quickly to him. Wraparound shot stuffed. Bowman follows his own mist and then kicked aside by Luter. It'll stay here. Foot race. One by Jerry, but a good stop there for Luter, his first. Able to kick that away. Meanwhile, Jerry going to go across the zone near side for Shaw. And Shaw going to back up and look for some running room here on the grass. Just in front of Coach St. Laurent. Gets inside the defender and then the long pole recovery. Good play. That's McGarry again, the defender. Advances it, Jackson Sakota. The senior going to escort it over midfield. And Hollis Brookline back in business here. And that slide was right there, too, and uh, McGarry. Oh, good play. Shot and score. It comes from the doorstep. That's Colin Corbin, the senior. Took advantage of maybe some miscommunication there defensively, and we're tied at one. Yeah, this was, uh, this was a good uh, transition play uh, right from the start with McGarry on the check. Uh, Hollis Brookline just waits this one out, and uh, they wait till the opening comes. Uh, and number eight just gets it down uh, on the outside. Simple play. Uh, the 
defense did look a little bit disorganized getting back uh, in into the box. Meanwhile, Hollis Brookline looking to keep the momentum going at the faceoff X. And they're now three for three. The freshman, Justin Colby, wins another. That's Colby. I called him, I think, Torgerson earlier. But <laughs> that's Colby, the senior. That makes a little more sense. Yeah. <laughs> As he, uh, he's had an effect here and, again, did not play. The first time these two teams met back on May the 17th. So an advantage brewing already for Hollis Brookline as they look to take their first lead. This one intended for Corbin, knocked down by Newman and scooped up here along the near sideline by Morin. Now a foot race, takes a big hit in Ooh. front of the Hollis Brookline bench and he steps out of bounds. Good play as a couple of Hollis Brookline defenders converged on Morin along the sideline and forced him out. Yeah. The official was right there on uh, along the sideline, so. Big hit there. It looked close. By Andrew Torgerson, the junior. Back on the attack. Cavaliers go to Corbin. Corbin looking to draw tension on the near side, a half a slide. Called off by Timberlane as Cavaliers will poke along the perimeter. So Thomas Anderson gets the step, draws a full slide this time. His pass is knocked down, and now it's up for grabs behind the cage. Corbin trying to battle off two owls. Lost his stick. Shaw trying bounds. to stay in bounds and may have stepped out. And Timberlane again almost forcing a turnover. Cavaliers dodge a bullet, and they'll pull it back out for a second try here as we tick down towards four minutes first quarter. To his right, this is Defoe. Nowhere to go. Up top, pass dropped. Loose, trying to scoop. Knocked off the play, and then oh, it's Newman, the who is knocked to the ground. We get a whistle, and Timberlane's going to get the possession. Yeah, they were lucky they didn't get something on the head there. He got him from behind, and the, the push was there, but the push <laughs> started at the head. It's been rough and tumble. And they're letting him play. You're right, Nick, and I do like that. Uh, there's been some stuff that I would have thrown a flag on, but uh, kudos to them. Well, the players need to expect that, right? The tournament game, it's going to be a little more physical than usual, right? Yeah, and, uh, you know, if anybody watched any of the uh, games this past weekend at the collegiate level, it was all rough and tough. I mean, it, you, you got to let these guys play. Turnover. Cavaliers trying to punch their ticket in transition. Not so fast as Owl defenseman Braden Paris. Able to hack it loose from behind, and now the other way comes Newman. Newman looks behind, and the senior... In full flight down the middle. Extra pass tipped in the air. Nice tip. And yeah, that's going to go to Hollis Brookline. Coach Blaska upset on the field over there at the head of the home bench. Yeah, he's right, too. Uh, Rudy Rosen, number two, he did tip that pass. There's no question about it. I think Coach Blaska felt like George was the closer player as well. Meanwhile, good play by George. Picked up, shot, Roman. and score. It's Braden Bowman, the junior. Well, Roger, you've had an eye on the youngster really all season, right? He, One of your favorite players. He shows you why there. It's 2-1 Timberlane, and now a whistle down on the field. Got a timeout here. And we have a timeout. It comes with just over three minutes to go in this first quarter. Timberlane retakes the lead with a Braden Bowman goal. Our broadcast today. As it always is, brought to you by Beals Insurance. Locations in both Bedford and Londonderry, whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. Also by MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising is the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Start raising money for your team today. Also by New Hampshire, iPhone repair. It's done while you wait. It's backed by their lifetime warranty. And now with six locations in southern New Hampshire and on the seacoast. Visit nhiphonerepair.com. By the New Hampshire Tomahawks. Showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit nhtomahawks.com and also girls.nhtomahawks.com. By the Dead River Company, a full-service heating provider. Committed to keeping New Hampshire warm with propane and heating oil. Learn more 
at deadriver.com. And finally, by the Bean Group and Roger Howe Real Estate, your local professional for all types of real estate, residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties. Call 603-247-1583. Nick Anastas with Roger Howe with you. First round of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division II Tournament. We'll be busy this weekend. Doubleheader in Division I coming your way. First game, 11 a.m. from the Gate City is Nashua South. You mentioned them. They're the three seed, taking on perennial power Pinkerton. That, again, is a, an 11 o'clock start. And then at 3.30, we see the defending champion Bishop Girton Cardinals take on Bedford. Again, a one-two punch coming your way. D1 quarterfinals on Saturday here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. It's all brought to you by Beals Insurance. Across the zone, but passing on the shot is Defoe. As the Timberlane defense able to recover, Defoe going to pull it back out. And the Cavaliers look to take their time coming out of the timeout as we work inside of three minutes here first quarter. Yeah, Coach, Coach Dom wants them to settle this down and run a good offensive possession. But i got to tell you, Defoe had a shot there, and he hesitated because of the yellow call, and uh, he was immediately collapsed on by three defenders, you know, basically, you know, snuffing that uh, potential uh, uh, shot out. But, uh, hey, you've got to keep the ball out of Timberlane's hands right now, and you've got to get a good shot on goal. Near side, Defoe. Newman. Staying with him step for step. It goes back up tall for to up top for Torgerson. Torgerson draws the slide and the switch. They'll swing it back near side. A little room this time. Good shot. Go. Ends up high. That was Anderson who let it fly. That one had some zip on it. A good contest behind the net by Timberlane, but in the end it stays here. Little shimmy shake now behind the cage. Colby trying to go back to work on the far side. Leaves it up top. Tipped again. Newman trying to close out. That one's still loose, but ends up. Back with Defoe and Hollis Brookline. Inside of two minutes now, first quarter. Boy, Newman and Chival are everywhere t out there on defense for uh, the Owls. They're Here's Shaw making a play as well. Got a piece of that pass. Trying to knock Anderson off the ball near the sideline. A little jarring in front of the Timberlane bench. Coach Blaska smiling. Again, a physical tone set early in this one. And continuing here on this play. Meanwhile, Defoe tiptoeing, draws a slide, yeah. back across, dropped on the far side wing, and scooped up by Shaw. Timberlane gets the turn turnover they were hoping for. Shaw able to absorb a hit, leave it back for Shivel, and now Marston out of the net. Going to swing it near side for Newman. Coming up on one minute remaining. Clear handle by Morin as he catches over the middle cleanly. McGarry trying to chase him now along the near sideline. Oh. McGarry whacked it out of his stick. It goes out of bounds. And it's turned back over to Hollis Brookline. Another good play by the senior defenseman. Two, two takeaways for him in this uh, early part of the game. He's been active with that long pole. He's still got it. Oh, and now it's stuffed by George, recovered by McGarry. Let's it go deep. Poked up into the sky. Loose on the far sideline. Logan Johnson on the scene, but lost his footing there and stepped out of bounds. Landed. Out of bounds on that far sideline in front of some of the Cavalier fans who have made the trip here to Plastow. All right, so it's back to Hollis Brookline here as we're down to 30 seconds. Another chance for the Cavaliers to tie the game at two. Anderson looking for the slide. Again, <laughs> knocked down by Newman. Anderson trying to keep him on his back, trying to box him out. Ends up with the ball, but he's double teamed. Torgerson gives him a lifeline, and now it's slung over to Roy. We're down to 10 seconds. Roy gets to step across oh, the zone. Nice. Shot and score. Andrew Torgerson, the junior, in the right place to take that one there as the pass sails across the crease. An easy put home. And we're tied at two with just five seconds remaining in this first quarter. Th th this was the goal that almost never was. Uh, they were pinched on the sideline right in front of the Owls bench, and they recovered this, got it up top, and then quickly swung, uh, swung it over to the uh, far side where Roy was. Uh, and this was a great look and a great play. I thought he was going to take the shot first, but he saw the, the attackman come across. Good look. Eddie play on the pass is right. Torgerson. Able to finish it off with just five seconds left. 
And we're going to end the first quarter. Tied at two here in Plastow. Punch, counter punch through 12 minutes. Timberlane and Hollis Brookline even as we head to the second quarter. Right back to the action in just a moment. You're watching the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division II Tournament right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Start of the second quarter. Aaron Plastow, 2-2. Timberlane and Hollis Brookline. A lot on the line, obviously. A trip to the quarterfinals, which comes your way on Saturday. Hollis Brookline, I think, just thankful to be in the tournament. After a nightmare start, they caught fire. Winners of five of their last eight, and they get in as a 14 seed. Timberlane, after a 12-4 regular season, they end up as the number four seed and are hoping to get back to another championship round appearance as they did last year where they fell short in the finale against Portsmouth. But of all the first round draws, Timberlane may have gotten the short straw, so to speak. As we were talking off air, Roger, this Cavalier team getting hot at the right time and certainly through 12 minutes at least look a lot stronger than their seating. Indeed, and uh, we have one every year, don't we? It seems like Division Two always has got the uh, first round hard matchup game, and this is it. Uh, last year was, of course, uh, Portsmouth Winnicunit. Right. This year it's this one by far. Timberlane gets a win at the face-off X. Jack Condon, the sophomore, does it himself. And now as the teams switch ends, Timberlane looking to retake the lead. They held leads of 1-0 oh, and 2-1. Oh, now they have one it. of 3-2. Jerry. Looked like when five hole caught Looter by surprise. He's got two goals, and Timberlane's back in front 3-2. Yeah. Hollis Brookline just, they were, I don't want to say they were sleeping, but they just didn't think he was going to drive, and there was no help on the backside there. That uh, number 40, excuse me, number uh, 40 by the looks for Hollis Brookline was just kind of hesitating there, uh, or 44 it is. Uh, before he uh, uh, crept over there, but he should have been right on that uh, on that uh, goal line. So the Owls, after surrendering a late goal with just five seconds to go at the end of that first quarter, they strike 27 seconds into the second quarter and retake the one goal advantage. Meanwhile, this one loose, still loose, up in the air. A couple of players taking a whack. And ultimately, it comes down with Hollis Brookline's Connor Penalt Cook, sophomore attackman, able to play the bounce right there. And now the visitors on the attack for the first time here in this second quarter with a minute gone by. There's the one on ones we were looking for. Roy against Shivel. Shivel trying to steer him left. Gets rid of it, taking near side. Torgerson. Back for Anderson, far side for Roy. A little game of catch here outside the box. Coming middle, Torgerson. Yes. Trying to make something happen. Little jab, Roy to his right, draws a slide. Double team. Low pass, gets away from Anderson, is knocked out of bounds, and that's the Timberland defense that we've seen all season. Yeah, this is, uh, this is one of their Achilles heels so far in this game, is just keeping the ball under control while they're on offense. And... Uh, they, they definitely changed their look on offense this time around uh, in the second. Uh, they spread things out and tried to uh, uh, keep those defenders uh, a little outside the box area or inside what we call packing it in. Uh, and uh, with the exception of the foible there, they would have had a, had a pretty good run there. 
Timberlane able to handle the ride well. No problem on the clear. And now back on the attack looking for their first two-goal lead of this first half. But now two minutes gone by in this second quarter. Looks like Coach Blaska and uh, Coach St. Laurent uh, had the same offensive plan here for the second. They're both going very, very spread. Uh, probably going to work some corners here, try some one-on-ones, make the defense work a little harder. Yeah, spacing is a little different than what we saw it looked like in the first quarter as they're trying to maximize, maybe use some of that speed. Oh, nice play. With an excellent example. Able to tiptoe along the goal line and then go over the shoulder of Luter for his second goal. Coach Blatska not in his head, nodding his head on the home sideline, liking what he sees, 4-2 Timberlane. If you folks out there uh, can, can see schematics and X's and O's as uh, good as I'd like to think I do, um, they were in a 2-2 there, and they just challenged the corners. And you can see from that replay, there was no slide to be had anywhere. And when you can challenge the corners and you can have success like Bowman and Gary and George can do on attack, you're going to see that, uh, that success come through. And that was just a perfect example right there. Meanwhile, another face-off win for Hollis Brookline's Justin Colby. Cavaliers. Looking for a counter punch here. Roy looking over at Coach St. Laurent on the bench. Getting the marching orders here. Coming up on three minutes gone by. Second quarter. Cavaliers down two for the first time. Give it to Bowman. That's his second goal too. Nick. Two apiece for Bowman. And Ethan Jerry for Timberlane. Hollis Brookline's goals came in the first quarter from Colin Corbin and Andrew Torgerson. Nice opening. Shot. Corbin. Kind of a tough angle. Left that one a little wide and to the right. Backed up in the near corner by Defoe. And the Cavaliers looking for another shot here. Full sprint behind the cage. Open in front is Corbin with the pass. Gets behind him. Shivel looking to reclaim for Timberland. He's got it. The sophomore long pole. Goes back to the cage for Marston. Owls get another stop on a good defensive sequence. It was there, though, Roger, the, the opening out in front of the cage, but it was not meant to be there for Hollis Brookline. Yeah, there, there was a lot of bodies in there, too. That would have had to have been a perfect pass and uh, uh, reception on the crease to connect there. Meanwhile, Bowman with a nice catch, able to reel it in on the run for the clear. The junior in a full sprint. Brings it behind the cage, and Timberlane ready to operate once again. The attack looking to warm up. Hoping for another goal here. Trying to increase their lead to three with now four minutes gone by in this second quarter. So this this is that same set that they were in. There's a turnover. Over and back. Yep. And over and back. Shaw dropped it, recovered it on the wrong side of midfield. We'll go back to that set if they pop back in it. Meanwhile, Corbin being harassed by Shivel. Cavaliers given a second chance. This is what they need to do with Roy. They need to get Roy and Corbin. They need to get them in positions where they can use their skills and their shot speed. This has been one of the better matchups, Shivel on Roy. So far, Shivel has been able to contain him. Uh, he has been impressive all season long. This is, uh, fortunately for us, our third go-around with Timberlane this year, and uh, he's, uh, he's really shown me something on defense. Only a sophomore, too. Of course, his older brother, Joe, unfortunately lost for the season with a leg injury. Oh, good check again. The senior hasn't played. He's got at least three or four forced uh, turnovers. Trying to absorb, oh, nice. and look at this. Timeout. Playing keep away from three different Cavaliers. One of them lost their stick. The timeout comes from Coach Blaska. <laughs> and Shivel getting some love on the home sideline. The sophomore played well here, to your point, in this first half. With now five minutes gone by, second you, quarter. You, you could tell just by his body language that he was like, Coach, I, I just did this great toe drag, and I brought the ball back, and I had <laughs> position, and you called timeout. I was ready to go to the go to the hole, you know, and oh man, but uh, hey, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do out there. You never doubt the coach. Well, it's been a fun one so far as we head towards the midway point of the second quarter. Timberlane struck first. Three minutes in, Ethan Jerry 
lit the lamp after a lengthy trip for Timberlane to put the home team out in front 1-0. Hollis Brookline responded about two minutes later with a Colin Corbin goal to tie it at one. Braden Bowman got his first goal around the three-minute mark as Timberlane reclaimed the lead 2-1. to one. And then with five seconds to go in the first quarter, Hollis Brookline's Andrew Torgerson able to punch one in along the near post, tie the game at two, and that's where we were to begin this second quarter. And so far, both goals have belonged to the Owls. A second for Jerry and a second for Bowman. And that's where we are here, 4-2. With, again, five minutes gone by, as you can see. A good crowd here. A lot of youngsters, Roger. I saw, yep, there they are, behind the bleachers here, throwing the, throwing the ball around. Seems like a, a good community event once again, no matter what the season here at Timberlane Regional High School. Yeah, I don't know of any other sport out there. Maybe baseball when you bring your glove and your ball to the ballpark. But lacrosse, it seems like all the youth uh, crowd that comes to the games, uh, whether it's uh, at the big stadiums or even here at the uh, high school level, you know, all the brothers and sisters, they, they've got their sticks with them, and they're always passing and throwing. It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a different vibe when you see that uh, with the youth guys uh, watching their older, older siblings playing. All right, out of the timeout, Timberlake looking oh, yeah. for something in transition. George on the doorstep, denied by Luter, recovered by Bowman, stopped again by Luter. Tucker Luter, the senior, seeing some rubber there, but no problem. Denied both Bowman and George on the doorstep. Meanwhile, Jerry finds George again, <laughs> and then he was hit on the release. Good defensive play by the defenseman. Senior Grant Batson, who jammed up the shot. A couple of golden, no, three golden opportunities for Timberlane with nothing to show. Can't remember a time I've seen more shots blocked by bodies and sticks. Here's a bouncer, Jerry, to his right. Looter leaving the cage, trying to win the foot race, but it's instead going to stay here. George the closest to it. And now George ready for the restart. Midway through, second quarter, home team looking for a three-goal lead for the first time. Bowman, downhill, shake and bake, back to the middle. Got it. Split dodge, shot, and score. Well, there's that one-on-one, -on -one, Roger, you were calling for. Bowman, who's got tremendous quickness. Now got a first half hat trick, and his team leads by three, five to two. Yeah, and this makes a lot of sense because their attack on, on the Owls uh, is very fast. They are cohesive. They know where each other uh, is, and uh, uh, they're trying, and this is what uh, Coach Blaska also said at the beginning of the game. He said, we try to work in zones, and we try to get guys free so that they're going one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what I was looking for here in this first half, and they've obviously put that into, into gear here with three straight goals. After a pretty even first quarter, even on the scoreboard, even in a number of areas, Timberlane has seized control here through the first six minutes of this second quarter. We get a violation here as well against Hollis Brookline on the faceoff. Yeah, he was holding uh, as he popped out of the uh, stance there. So the Owls have it and look for a fourth straight. Coach Blaska. Waving his arm from the home sideline, trying to direct traffic. Timberland attack has looked good. Three goals in six minutes. Trying to ride the wave of momentum. George going to pull it back out for Jerry. Well, if you're Hollis Brookline, Roger, what do you do here? Any changes defensively as we head down the stretch oh, here in the second the quarter? Well, Wide open, <laughs> a bouncing shot ends up out of bounds. We'll stay with Timberland. Yeah, I mean... This is uh, possibly Hollis Brooks, Brookline's uh, weak link out there. Uh, you know, the one-on-one -on -one pressure. Uh, obviously, you can't evacuate the crease area like they just did there on the big, big slide when the guy gets beat out front the box. But, man, you, you just got to buckle up here. Maybe go into zone here for a little bit. Switch it up. Shaw going to flip it far aside. They're going to swing it now behind the cage. Bowman, good dodge. Back for Jerry, yeah. and there's the shot. And score. Pretty release there. Came from low to high, it looked like. Timberlane riding high right now at 6-2. And they are moving the ball. Let me tell you, they, they are looking for the openings. Uh, and they're, they're finding seams 
uh, when they see Hollis Brookline move. Like, like here is 44. He's just kind of ball watching there, and uh, they're popping it out front. So, you know, Bowman finds Jerry, and he just goes low to low. Great play. Mm. Yeah, low to low. That wing hovered about a foot above the ground the whole way. And just too much in the end for Luter to track. Hollis Brookline needing a response. They get it at the X. Colby with a win. Corbin initially had the step near side. Going to pull it back out. Been a while since the Cavaliers have gone on the attack. Looking for a goal here as we move inside a five minute second quarter. Yeah, seven minutes down the other end, I think. Just about. Roy. To his left, runs the defender over, leaves it up top for Defoe. The shot swallowed up by Marston. The junior goaltender was ready. The long outlet hauled in by Schivel. Schivel goes over midfield. The defenseman wants a shot of his own. Stopped by Luter. Goaltender was ready. Makes the save down by his ankle. Outlet pass, though. Stolen by Jerry. Bouncing attempt ends up out of bounds. And a good effort by George, who laid out. But in the end, could not fight off Grant Batson, who gets the position. Cavaliers have it. Good action. Yeah. I think Shivel's eyes lit up there as he came down the middle of the field. Sorry, he had a shot. Good tried, shot. Tried to beat Luter low, right? They had just scored on a similar uh, attempt, but I guess Luter learned from his mistake there and had no problem. <laughs> He, on he the shivel shot. He had a clear look, let's put it that way. It was straight on, and, yep. uh, but the, the, the thing with the long pole shooting is that it's the release and how they release it and how quickly you, it's, it's deceptive, and, and uh, Luter just saw it. He Meanwhile, saw a good it. slide here by Newman forces the ground ball. Kicked away and still up for grabs. Johnston in the mix for Timberlane, but ultimately it's Torgerson for the Cavaliers. Who's going to keep it at this end as we move towards three minutes second quarter. The junior with a goal to his credit. Given room now behind the cage by the defender, Braden Paris. Lowers that left shoulder. Back out for Corbin. Calling for it at the top of the box is John Paul Chargerson. He's going to fire on the run. The bouncer ends up a foot or so wide. And it rolls out of play harmlessly in that far corner. Roy ready for the restart. We're ready to roll inside of three minutes here until halftime. Coming up at halftime, a full recap of the first half action. Plus, Rogers got some stats. We've got highlights and an out-of-town tournament scoreboard. Got him beat. All coming up at halftime. Torgerson jammed up. Marston out of the cage, taking a risk. His teammate Johnston ends up with it for Timberlane, and now the defenseman on the run on the far side, getting hacked at from behind. I think Coach Blaska just called his second time out. He did. Good thing. Home team going to ensure the possession. The Owl bench fired up. We get another pause here with 2.41 to go until halftime. A lot of scrums here, Roger, in this first half. Both teams have come up with the ground ball at times. Johnston makes a good play there. Yeah, and I want to just comment on that last series right before that scrum there uh, where the ball got uh, kicked out on the far side of the field and Torgerson uh, number 13 picked that ball up he just kind of trotted over to the near side of the field here and you know I'd like to see Hollis Brookline get a little more pep in their step he should have taken it right to the hole he had five of his teammates trailing him and if they were doing the same thing and collapsing into that uh, offensive zone uh, they might have had an opportunity there uh, you know, I don't know whether they're just uh, hoping to get good long possessions at this point and, and try and uh, get a layup. But, man, you've got to take opportunities like that, and you've got to run with it sometimes. And uh, that was a little bit too passive for me. And, you know, as I've said all season long, I, I like to push the ball. I like to, to find opportunities and, you know, put it in the, put it in the stick of my uh, better players and my skilled players and let them just, uh, you know, use their IQ. Well, I'm sure... Coach St. Laurent has a few things to address at halftime. They're facing their largest gap of the game. A four-goal difference here. They have not scored in this second quarter. And frankly, have been on the defensive more often than not here in this frame. Yeah, and, and, and 
Coach St. Laurent, uh, he, he was that type of player when I coached him and I saw him at Bishop Curtin. He, he could get that ball and he could go end to end and he was a chugger and uh, he was nothing but motion and, uh, and strength in, uh, you know, in his game. And uh, I'm sure he's going to try and you know, get these guys going. As we mentioned earlier, continued his NCAA career at both UMass and Franklin Pierce after graduating from Bishop Girton a few years back. Meanwhile, long pass yes. disrupted. Cavaliers get to it. Timeout called from the visitor's sideline. A ground ball there for Colin McGarry, who gets congratulated on the sideline. And Coach St. Laurent just used his second and final timeout here with 2.27 to go in the quarter. Yeah, smart timeout. Smart timeout. Use it. Can't take it with you. All right, we've got scores coming up. Roger, first round matchups in Division Two, Of course, D2, the largest of the three divisions, as we know, and arguably the deepest in terms of parity. Timberlane, Hollis Brookline. Obviously, this is a 4-13 matchup. Winner here gets the winner between St. Thomas and Manchester Memorial slash Central. That's the 5-12 matchup being played out on the Seacoast in Dover. The 8-9 is a juicy one, right? Oyster River and Hanover. Mm -hmm. yep. Conval, your sleeper pick, Roger. They end up as the 7 seed. They'll be at home against Cobrown Northwood. Wyndham ends up as the 3 speed, uh, seed. They're heavy favorites over over Alvern. Uh, that's the 314. Mm. And then Winnicunit and Goffs down. The 6 and the 11 going to be played out out in Hampton. So, Yeah, the only disappointing thing in the bracket in the D2 uh, 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 division is the fact that uh, we're probably not going to see Timberlane and uh, Portsmouth uh, in the finals. Not, not probably, we won't. They're in the same grouping uh, in that top uh, tree. So, Yeah, Portsmouth will get the winner of Oyster River in Hanover. And as I mentioned, if Timber Timberlane does win this one, they'll face either St. Thomas or Memorial slash Central. All right, final two minutes, second quarter. Hollis Brookline looking for their first goal of the period. Trying to climb back one goal at a time, facing their largest deficit, trailing here by a score of 6-2. to two. Look how tight they are on the crease just, just a second ago. They had three guys on the crease packed in. Can't get a lot of movement there. Corbin. Shadowed by Johnston, gets inside of him, tiptoeing behind the cage. Leaves it back, far side, they'll swing it again. Anderson wants it up top. Takes a low pass, moves to his right, fires on the run, Marston is ready. Snapped that five hole shut. Comes up with another save, the junior has been tested here and there in this first half. Looking good there, living up to his reputation of perhaps one of the best in the state. Meanwhile, this one turned over. Pass too strong, sails over the head of Morin, who could not catch up. Coach Blasco a bit upset. Yeah, that was the first mistake I think they've made on defense clearing the ball today, other than a couple of swat downs by Hollis. But Meanwhile, good hit here along the near sideline. George put some wood on him. But Jackson Sakota able to absorb the check and spin his way across midfield. Now spins inside of the defender, Newman. Well done. Trying to get rid of it, but Newman's right on him. Nobody's moving. Inside of a minute now, 45 seconds. This one ends up on the grass, up in the air. Roy uh, looking for it. Uh, Couldn't find it. Turned back over to Timberlane. Man, Sakota did all that work, and they turn it over. Just The guys were following the ball. They weren't trying to get open. Shivel. Got a man open downfield. This is Charest. Charest to the cage. Shot. Denied by Luter. Outlet pass. Knocked down by George. Done that a few times in this first half. Oh, McGarry. McGarry, long pass. He's upset with himself as it goes out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, that's his first mistake that I've seen. Down to 23 seconds. Maybe one last shot on the way for Timberlake. Owls hoping to go up five at halftime. Jerry goes middle. Bowman couldn't track it. It's turned over, then poke loose. Going to roll to midfield with 10 seconds to go. That's... A pile up here at midfield. Charest ends up with it for the Owls. Up ahead for Shaw. He's got to hurry. Down to two seconds. Oh! And he's taken down around the neck by McGarry. As the horn sounds, the referee throws a flag. 
McGarry tried to make, I think, a play on the ball and ended up almost decapitating the Timberlane player there. As you can see, Shaw goes down by the neck. Yeah, maybe McGarry, a little. McGarry, a little too aggressive there, goes underneath the chin and then just kind of hooked him on his way to the ground. Maybe some uh, leftover frustration after he threw that clearing pass out of bounds. He uh, he got him up good. Meanwhile, the officials... Well, it's on the head, so they may... They're talking about it. They may lock this one in because of the length of time and the positioning of the stick. Wow. They got away with that. A hold. Just a hold. So just your garden variety penalty here, which, wow. Roger, by the way, is... The first penalty either way, and it comes at the tail end of the first half. Yeah. So, Timberlane, they've got a 6-2 lead on the board. They're going to have possession, right, to begin the third quarter. And I believe be it will be a face. Oh, it will be a face. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so well, there will be a face. Well, barring the, the face off, either way, they're going to have a man advantage to begin the second half. A good first half. Big second quarter for Timberlane. They... Break open the 2-2 tie, score all four goals in the frame, and have their largest lead on the board at the break, 6-2. Yeah, man, they gotta they got to think uh, how they're going to stop uh, Mr. Jerry and Mr. Uh, Bowman. All right, coming up, look back at that first half. Rogers got the stats. Ben's got the highlights. I've got the out-of-town scoreboard. John Barron's got it all under control. We're back here <laughs> in just a moment. You're watching. The first round of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse NHIAA Tournament here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Back in a moment, it's presented by Beals Insurance. Broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, Summer and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to 
start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time. Given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with the Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of the Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's, it's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. Halftime here in Plastow, Timberlake, out in front of Hollis Brookline by a score of 6-2. to two. Nick and Astis, Roger Howe with you. First round coverage of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division II Tournament. The winner advances to Saturday's quarterfinal round. Well, we had a 2-2 game after one. As we saw back and forth action through the first 12 minutes, Timberlane's Ethan Jerry... Put the home team in front, 1-0 early. Colin Corbin answered a moment later to tie the game at 1. Braden Bowman, the junior for the Owls, reclaimed the lead with about three minutes to go in that first quarter. 2-1 Timberland at that point. Then five seconds to go in the quarter. Andrew Torgerson of Hollis Brookline tied the game at 2, and that's where we were through 1. And then Timberlane threw their weight around, hoping to get back to a second straight championship game appearance. They looked like it during that second quarter. Jerry got his second goal early. Put the home team back in front 3-2. And then Bowman with back-to-back -back goals. Extended the lead to 5-2 midway through that frame. Jerry gets one at the five-minute mark. 6-2 Timberlane. And then we go scoreless for the final 5-0-2. Lone penalty comes at the tail end. In fact, at the buzzer. A moment ago, just before the halftime horn, which means the EMO is on the way for Timberland as they look to extend their largest lead. Roger, what did you see there in the first half from both teams? Well, I, I saw good, patient offense, uh, especially towards the uh, end of the first quarter and into the, in the entire second quarter by uh, Timberlane, and uh, they, they are pushing the ball just as Coach Blaska said that they wanted to do. Uh, they changed up their uh, formation on offense and did a little bit of spread uh, from a circle to a 2-2-2, two -two -two, and I like that. Uh, I want to see more athleticism out of the Cavaliers. They have it. Their bodies are bigger. They look a little bit more athletic size-wise, at least from uh, what we can see up here. Uh, and, and they seem to be just a little bit tight and, and in slow motion sometimes. Their shots are even in slow motion sometimes. We've only seen really a couple of good cranks uh, by Roy and Colby. Uh, and uh, um, I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Isolate your best guys out there. And uh, this, this one last series they had, uh, uh, Hollis Brookline, uh, before the half, um, they, they, they cut through. 
uh, from the top of the midfield and open things up a little bit on the alley side, uh, the right side, near side of the field. And uh, they got a good take, but the shot was very, very slow. Um, so they just need to step it up a notch, I think, get a little more uh, uh, energy going out there. Uh, it's very important, I think, that they, uh, uh, you know, obviously squelch this um, uh, uh, man up uh, for Timberlane, uh, get possession here, and, uh, you know, start off with the, with the ball in their stick and put a quick one in. How about some of the stats, Roger? Seems like the Cavaliers... Built an early advantage at the face-off X, and then Timberlane kind of evened that out in the second quarter. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, Hollis is still uh, up in the uh, face-off department. I guess we are not going to face. Uh, that is correct, yeah. So they're going to start, uh, Timberlane's going to start with the ball. Uh, I didn't think they had possession there when the, when the whistle blew, but that's okay. Uh, regardless, um, uh, yeah, so they were up 6-2 to two on the face-offs, and, uh, uh, you know, give uh, Colby, Justin Colby, credit there. He, was, uh, he did his part, uh, and um, uh, Luter has five saves, and uh, Marston, two mm. in that first half. All right, Timberlane. First EMO either way to begin the second half, threatening to open up a five-goal lead for the first time. As the skies... Nice. Continue to darken here. Tic-tac-toe. Beautiful pass over the middle. Bowman's got another. How about four goals now for the junior? It takes just 20 seconds for the special teams to kick in. 7-2 Timberlane. EMO. Uh, goal for him. And uh, <laughs> patience on the perimeter with the passing. And uh, just a simple cut through the box. And uh, they find success. Bowman's on fire. Yeah. Four goals. Comes from a lacrosse family. Yeah. As we know, Roger, and has played well all season for Coach Blaska. Yeah, I love coaching his older brother, Mike. Uh, same kind of player, dirty, gritty. I can remember a tournament up in New York, and uh, Mike Bowman was up there. He got off the field. He was covered in mud, mm. had mud in his hair, snot coming out of his nose. He was just a down and dirty guy, and his <laughs> brother's the same way. Giving us the... The visual, I like it. Ah, uh, he was he was one of my favorite. In in fact, in that same tournament, uh, uh, Cormac McCarthy, who uh, was a starting defender for Tampa this past weekend, who won the Division Two championship, mm. uh, Cor Cor Cormac uh, blew his knee out in that same game. I'll never forget it. He's come a long way. Former Bedford Bulldog. Yeah, representing New Hampshire very well. Indeed. Over the holiday weekend, Tampa Division Two champions. Up-and-coming program, as we know, they've arrived. Not up-and-coming anymore. Meanwhile, Jerry again. is again hooked by McGarry. Wow. Tumbles right in front of the official Tim Bethke, who lets it go. Jerry recovers. Split dodge. Fires and scores. Well, Jerry, looking like Marion Barber, the late Marion Barber. Taking a hit and keep on ticking. Goes right to the cage. Not to be denied there. 8-2 Timberlake. Well, the Cavaliers are lucky here because there's one, there's two, mm. and he puts them on the ground. Gary just keeps fighting, keeps fighting, and McGarry just can't get the ball away from the kid, and he goes five hole. I mean, it's almost time to start face guarding Bowman and Gary. <laughs> well, those two gentlemen have scored all eight goals. Yes, they have. Four apiece. Meanwhile... Another face-off win for Justin Colby. Hollis Brookline needing an answer. Their last goal came with five seconds to go in the first quarter, which tied the game at two at the time. Since then, the last six all scored by the home team. Ball down. Pops right back into the stick of Anderson. Cavaliers go behind the net now, and Corbin looks to direct traffic, given a little bit of room here by the defender, Condon. I don't recall seeing Taylor, number 16, the freshman, out there for the Cavaliers in the first half. And looks like they've made a change, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's Noah Taylor. He's behind the cage. Meanwhile, Roy escapes the pressure, goes right to the net, and Marston says, no way. Back to Timberlane it goes. Marston's third save comes at the doorstep. The juniors look good. Boy, that's called rising to the occasion when you're a goaltender. You, you don't take the fake. 
the body's coming at you, you just spread out and make that body as big as you can, and Marston made the right move at the right time. It looks like he left his feet. He did, yeah. To make that save. Yeah. yeah. Had the reputation really all season as one of the best goaltenders in the state regardless of division. Yeah, he's my dirt dog goalie. He, you know, because of the field he plays on, he, we've seen, well, that Winnicunic game, he came off the field, he was covered from top to bottom. Doesn't wear sweatpants in the cold weather and the muddy weather. He just, he, he wears the field <laughs> on, his, uh, on his body, and the, he, that's a prime example. Jerry's pass, a centering feed that's knocked astray. Bowman oh, trying to dig crease. it out. Ultimately, it's Luter, the goaltender, with it. Rainbow outlet pass, though, flies out of his stick too strongly. Ends up out of bounds. Cavaliers have had some some trouble on the clear here tonight. Yeah, and and uh, I don't know if it's nerves there with Luter, but uh, he really rushed that pass. He did not have to crank that ball up that way. Three minutes gone by, third quarter. Now Marston's turn to throw a long one. Jerry comes back middle, but it's McGarry who intercepts it. Played it well off the bounce. The defenseman looking upfield. He's got a man. This is Cook. Oh, Cook shot and score. Wow. Where'd that come from? Tough angle. Connor Penault Cook, the sophomore, beats Brady Marston. And a transition goal for the Cavaliers has got the visitors fired up once again. They're within five at 8 3. Well, McGarry figures in another play here, and he just forwards it up. He finds a little seam between the defenders, and uh, Cook, he finds a spot. Marston, I was just about to say in that prior uh, comment about uh, uh, Marston, he, he needs to hug the post there. You, they're, they're standing tall and, uh, you know, holding your ground and being positioned properly as a goaltender. And then there's the, the, the prior save he made, which is just, all, you know, all, all, all things uh, fly. But uh, he should have been hugging the post there and uh, been a little more cognizant of where uh, uh, Cook was with that. Meanwhile, Colby too early on the faceoff for Hollis Brookline. Timberlane with it. Charest gets rid of it. Into the corner for George. Going to sling it near side. It's still behind the cage for Jerry. Timberlane going to slow it down. Well, that Hollis Brookline goal broke up a six goal run by Timberlane. Sure did. And was their first goal in nearly 15 minutes over 15 minutes of game time. Yeah, close to 20. Ooh. Near side, Bowman being harassed by the defender, Rudy Rosa, swinging that long pole in his direction. Now Jerry with a spin move back to Bowman. Shot right at the grill of Luter. Oh, and again. Rebound denied. Bowman, pretty good look. Luter, another save. Boy, Luter's doing his job tonight, trying <laughs> to keep Hollis Brookline in this one. Well, he's like a hockey goalie. He, you know, it, it gives the rebound. Gets a save. Yeah. Another rebound gets a save. He's That's the second time this game he's had back-to-back -back saves. Cavaliers, though, fail to get the ground ball. And they may have to ask Luter to do it all again. Downhill comes Mikey Savage. You may recognize that name. Savage from a family of athletes and the freshman cutting his teeth here in real time in this third quarter of a playoff game. Yeah. yeah older brother Billy. Quite a defenseman. Oh! Meanwhile, George pushed out by the defender. Batson, ball flies out of his stick. McGarry, another ground ball, and now a clear along the far sideline as the pass is hauled in by Corbin. Corbin gets the step, got in front of Johnston. Slows down now, goes behind the cage to another freshman. As you mentioned, Noah Taylor, who I don't think, I think you're right, Roger, I don't think he played in that first half. Yeah, he's not, he's not... Noted on my card that he saw time. Well, this one gets away from the foe, but no challenge as he recovers. Comes full speed downhill at Shires, draws the slide. Nice pass, oh. shot, and score. It's Cook again. So the feed was on the money, Roger. Defense a little slow to recover, and soft spot out in front of the net is filled by Cook who's got his second goal of this third quarter Hollis Brookline's back within four yeah and we didn't uh, we didn't see Cook's name at all in the first uh, half and here he is he's finding a hey, good rotation off the off the middle of the field nice and Defoe finds him so so we see Hollis Brookline is starting to drive the alley a little bit and getting the defense of the Owls to pull out 
and uh, uh, they're getting some movement off the crease, which is what uh, uh, you should do uh, rather than pack it in like they were doing in the first half. Colby, nice play. Wins the faceoff straight up and then tosses it one-handed ahead to Corbin to ensure the possession. Cavaliers looking to build on some momentum. They scored back-to-back -back goals now. And as we come upon the midway point of this third quarter, trying to get back in the game, that's a long shot by Defoe. No problem for Marston. Outlet snapped out to Patnode. Throws it across the line, and now Bowman will take over from there. Yeah, again, another weak shot from uh, a distance out. 12 yards, 15 yards out is not going to do it. George near side. Jerry spins through two defenders, but the bouncer is wide. Ends up waist high right to his teammate, George, who's got it now behind the net. Batson with him, giving him some space. Inside and now six minutes, third quarter. Timberlane trying to break out of a mini rut here. After they've come away empty the last few chances. Yeah, nothing on the score sheet for Mr. George, who was, uh, has been prolific for them all year on the scoring side. No assists. Yeah, no I mean, every, every time we've done a Timberlane game this year, last year, yep. seems like George has found a way to punch up a few goals. But nice. Oh. He's contributed in other ways tonight. He's, he's played physical. He's been good on the ride, right? He's forced a few turnovers yeah. in the Cavalier end. Yeah, and at least one of those turnovers resulted in a goal. Uh, yeah. he, he got it over to Bowman. Meanwhile, that shot whizzed off the crossbar. We could hear it up here in the press box. Another offering by Jerry, seeking his fifth goal. The load has been carried, the scoring load anyway, by Bowman oh. and Jerry. Four goals apiece. Bowman. Misfires. Stick betrayed him. Ball pops out of the head. And now the other way comes Defoe in the middle. He's met by a hit. Morin tried to jar it loose. And now Roy with some running room. Roy around the defender. Roy right. shoots and scores. Jacob Roy, the senior, trying to extend his career one more game. He beats Marston low. He's got his first goal. And Hollis Brookline showing some fight here in this third quarter. They're back within three at now 8-5. Well, this is what I said they needed to start doing. They need to get the ball into Roy's hands because he can fire a cannon. And he just out this Again, the energy here. This is a noticeable difference from the first half out of the Cavaliers. They're really running and chugging, and they're moving their bodies finally. Uh, 43 Cook is moving his body. He was right there on the left side. He could have been an outlet. Good play by the Cavaliers. Let's go. You are Colby. Trying to glue together another possession. Wins at the faceoff X. The freshman in trouble near side. Taylor throws it blindly back towards midfield. A couple of players go crashing down to the grass, and this one is up for grabs. Bowman thought he was yanked. Scissored near side is Cook. Shivel throwing his big body around, trying to tiptoe the near sideline for Timberlane. Throws oh. it middle, picked off by Cook. Sean and score! Oh my goodness. Now the official is going to blow the whistle here after Cook celebrates. Goal is good. They're going to count the goal. Cook's got a hat trick in this third quarter. Not sure what he's calling here. Official Tim Betsky marching towards midfield. Both coaches looking for a further explanation. Yeah, let's look at the replay here because it was an easy pick. Shivel didn't go into his left hand on that when he was uh, coming back. Not sure what the call is. Dead ball conduct. I maybe it had to have must been, have been a push after the goal. Yeah, I didn't see it, Nick. Even on the replay, I'm not sure if. It could have been language. Could have, could have right, been, that's yeah, what I was about. Yeah. Could it have been something that a Cavalier player said? Yeah, it, it had to have been. Again, yeah. the emotions have been high. A physical first half. That lengthy play there involved a lot of chippiness. And, well, Hollis Brookline okay with the result, even though they're going to have to play defense here. They're within two, Roger, and they've scored four unanswered in this third quarter. Yeah. <laughs> after not scoring at all in the second quarter. And where did Cook come from? I mean, this guy just shows up and uh, cranks a, a hat trick. Yeah. Well, Timberlake nice. is not scoring this third there quarter. There it is. Until now, George. 
Laying in the cut on the weak side. The pass goes across the zone. George ready to catch and fire. The senior lights the lamp for the first time. And Timberlane gets one of the goals back to go back up by 3-9-6. Hey, uh, you know, any of my former players out there listening right now, what was the one thing I loved on offense? I love skip passes. If you can draw the defense down low and they commit, and you can look back on the other side and find it's easy money, easy money. Good step down there and a great look on that play by Condon. Timberlane needed an answer, their first goal since halftime. George, the senior, who had been quiet, Gets his name on the score sheet. Meanwhile, this kid has been a difference maker. Another face-off win for Justin Colby at the X. Gives the chance for the Cavaliers to get back within two. He's tearing it up. Got 11. Was noticeably absent the first time these two teams met back on May the, the 17th. It was an 8-6 win for Timberlane. Up top, Anderson. Hoping to draw a slide. Gets rid of it. Swung by Taylor. Near side, Corbin. Roy thought about it, jab, step, defender lost Boom. his balance, Good the job. slide comes over with a hit. Good play by Morin. That, that leaves the foe open, shot set aside by Marston. Loose far corner, whacked at by Newman, handled by Anderson, trying to keep it alive, tracked down now by Taylor. Again swung near side, goal line extended, Corbin looks in front, knocked down, gets through the zone, Anderson backs it up, up oh. top, one time across, Cook, little tip pass, handled by Corbin on the fly. And now trying to run away from Johnson. Inside of three minutes, third quarter. Hollis Brookline trying to get back within two. Much, much better, energetic, potent offense by the Cavaliers. Playoff intensity, right? Indeed. Shot on the move. Marston's there. Junior goaltender. Played the angle right that time. Another save. Takes his time with the outlet. Comes near his side. Paris, unchallenged for the moment. Back middle for Marston. Swung. This time to the far sideline. Newman closed out on Cook, harassing the defender. Long throw goes middle and unanswered until McGarry takes it away for the Cavaliers. Another ground ball for the defenseman. Up ahead for Cook. Cook looking for numbers. Stutter step, top of the box. Now going to weave his way away from danger. Near side and reset. Yeah, the Owl midfielders on that clear just kind of stood there. Once... Uh uh, Johnson got up to the 50-50 uh, there. They just kind of stood there. They didn't really cut down or cut back uh, to make an opening for themselves, and thus the turnover. Inside of two minutes, down to 90 seconds, third quarter. Wallace Brookline has come charging back, trying to get a step closer here. Big hit. Morin goes down. Firing is Roy. No problem again for Marston. Lloyd Boys. Marston stepping up, uh, yeah. Nick. Five saves already this quarter. Yeah, only had two at halftime. Part of that is the fact that Hall's Brookline has produced more shots, more yeah. consistently at least. Exactly. All right. Bowman with the step. Junior scored four times today as we hit one minute to go, third quarter. Trying to scurry away from Rosa behind the net. Far side wing, tough angle. Bouncer offered up there by Pat Node. Ooh. And a foot race won by McGarry. Another hustle play for the senior defender, but his outlet pass is too strong. Goes unanswered at midfield. Diving near side is oh, nice. Shivel. Ends up with Defoe. Backdoor feed for Corbin. Gets away from everybody and ends up with Marston. Outlet for Pat Node. Coming up on 30 seconds to go, third quarter. Padnode going to truck his way across midfield. Near side for Jerry. Coach Blaska, I think, wants one. No, oh, he yeah. wants his man to go to the cage and score another. Wow. Another big play for Jerry, who's got now one, two, three, four, five goals in this one. I love a lacrosse player that feels pressure and goes into his opposite hand. Starts to dodge in his right, swim move, back to his left, stays with it, knows that defender McGarry is following him, and he just lets it go, and it's a smart shot. Down low, on the wet, uh, wet uh, surface, and puts it right in. Very smart player. Jerry with five goals to lead the way. Wow. Owls with a 10-6 lead, just under 22 seconds to go, third quarter, back-to-back -back goals now for the home team after Hollis Brookline had scored four straight. Another win here 
at the X for Colby. Senior though in trouble near sideline, lost the ball. Cook trying to swipe it ahead. And now a big pile up here on the near side wing. It's anybody's guess. It ends up with Hollis Brook line, but Get they're going to run out of time. Down a two second shot, ends up wide, and that'll do it for the third quarter. Hollis Brook line making a game of it. They score four unanswered. Timberlane, though, reclaiming the upper hand in the final moments, getting back to back goals to push the lead back to four. 10 6 after three. Who will leave here still alive? Will it be Timberlane or will it be underdog Hollis Brookline? We begin to find out next. Fourth quarter on the way. You are watching the first round of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division II Tournament. Right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. It's presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. With hitting, football type, lower the shoulder. All right, we're back here in Plastow. A good crowd has been on hand. Student section there cheering on the home team. Timberlane, they've never trailed. They've got a 10-6 lead. Had a big lead at halftime of 6-2. And extended that early in the third quarter to as large as 8-2. Hollis Brookline, though, seemingly woke up. Connor Penalt cook scores three. Hollis Brookline rattles off four unanswered to get as close as 8-6 with about four minutes to go in the third quarter. Timberlane, though, they get some answers at the tail end of the frame. Eric George lights the lamp. And then Ethan Jerry, one of the senior captains headed to Plymouth State to play NCAA lacrosse. He's got five goals to lead the way for Timberlane. The junior, Braden Bowman, right behind him with four. And with 12 minutes to go in regulation, Timberlane, the number four seed in this tournament, hoping eventually to get back to another championship game appearance. They've got a four-goal lead to protect Roger, but Hollis Brookline has shown some fight in this second half. A tremendous amount of fight, and uh, as we just spoke off air, uh, I think that third quarter was one of the most exciting quarters of lacrosse we've called this season next to the the North Londonderry game we called down at Stellos, which uh, was a <laughs> was a nail biter right down to the end. But my goodness, uh, that quarter uh, had everything. Like you said, bodies flying, forced turnovers, saves, and of course, the most attractive aspect in my mind, at least, has been the fact that it's been a physical game, really physical. Bodies on the grass, a lot of hitting, max effort both ways playoff intensity and that's all either head coach could really ask for yeah and hand it to the officials uh you know they 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 are letting them play and, and uh, nothing egregious as you said um and uh just a good call here good the call foe, a laser offered up there from about 15 meters ends up over the crossbar hollis brookline backs it up another rifling shot that ends up wide, offered by Anderson. And now, again, backed up in the near corner by Cook. Now we're seeing some energy from the midfielders in their step-downs and their shots and in close. Uh, we didn't see a lot of that in the first half. Keep going. Anderson off the switch, poked at by Newman. Far side, Defoe met by Morin. Midfielder hacking there at him a little too aggressively. Flag comes. Low shot. Kicked away by Marston. It's loose. And now being hacked at in the dirt. Everybody with a stick involved. And finally, it's touched up and we get a whistle. Yeah, this is going to be on Moore and it's going to be a slash. Number four. First penalty against Timberlane. Only one penalty either way up until now. It came at the tail end of the first half. A hold against Hollis Brookline's. Yeah. 
McGarry. And now a full 60 going to be tacked up on the board against Timberlane. By the way, the only EMO we've seen so far resulted in a man-up goal by Timberlane's Braden Bowman. That's right, yeah. Uh, first goal of the third quarter. Yep. And let's see what these guys can do. See what kind of movement we get out of the uh, Cavaliers like this so far. Trying to get back within three. Just over a minute gone by, fourth quarter. Yep. Roy thought about it near oh, yeah. side instead. Corbin had it. He did. Closed out by the defender, Alex Sweet. And this one denied again down low by Marston. The junior turning in a big second half in goal for Timberlane. Yeah, Outlet for Shivel. Shivel going to weave his way to midfield. McGarry closes in on him on the sideline. Shivel still with it. Now finally oh, nice. poked away by McGarry. Kicked ahead by McGarry. Charest with the scoop. Whistle. Not sure what that is. It's against Timberlane. Hmm. Action took place in front of our friend Joe Marshallano over there in New Hampshire High School Sports. I'm sure Joe didn't blink. Joe's tough. Corbin. Trying to find an open man near side. A delayed shot from Cook ends up wide of the net. Well, they killed it. Back to even strength here with two minutes gone by. Fourth quarter. Yep. Meanwhile, Coach Laurent, Coach St. Laurent upset. And now the official Tim Bethke trying to sort something out here. Mm. <laughs> He's going to send Timberlane's Nick Kellen, senior midfielder, back to midfield. He, he left the box too soon. McKellen comes sprinting in, and we're set to go now. Starting to get dark here in Plastow. Lights are on. Wind picking up a little bit. It's a little chilly as well. One-on-one -on -one move. Roy draws the slide, got busts it. straight through it, and fires a shot on the run that ends up wide. Not quite clean on the release. No, Paris got a good late check on this. We can get a good glimpse here. Yep. Right there. Uh, it came a little late, but uh, he, he obviously messed him up. Effective Ooh. either way. Marston again in the way of the shot. And a good one-handed scoop up oh, by Roy, oh, and then he oh. lights the lamp. <laughs> Near side. Sniping and playing off his teammates' energy here along the near sideline. Visitors seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. They're back within three at 10 7. Yeah, I heard some talk, you know, through the uh, high school circles that this guy, Roy, was a real sniper and uh, he has some energy. And this is evidence right here. Drops the shoulders, just rips it. And, uh, and Marston really, I don't think he even saw that because he, because he had his uh, defender, Alex Sweet, standing right in front of him. He may not have even seen the shot released. Colby up ahead for Corbin, who again plays a conservative here. Going to pull it back. Didn't quite have the, the room he was hoping for. Newman a good job on the recovery. And again, the Cavaliers have it. Big hey. reason they're still in the game has been the play of Justin Colby at the X. Who's given Hollis Brookline an advantage. Trying to get back within two for the second time here in this second half. Yeah, he certainly has kept them uh, on, on point here with their offensive game and keeping possessions. Back out for Defoe. Once a one-on-one, -on -one, gonna come at Conroy near side, draws a slide. Somebody's gotta be open. Yeah. Double team up top. It's Anderson wide again. Marston. No, I think he got a piece of that. Did thing. he? Yeah, I think he got it off his leg. I'm, I'm a little more down, down towards goal line extended than you are. I think he got his leg out on that. I think you're right. He's kind of flexing that right leg now as if it stung him a little bit maybe. Meanwhile, Defoe forced to give it up. Taylor left unaccompanied behind the net. Low pass gets away from Cook. But he's unchallenged as he reclaims the possession here. Four minutes now, gone by, fourth quarter. Yeah, really get on the recovery side, guy. Shot. Oh, a hit throw. Wow. Body in between. Now loose towards midfield. Torgerson, a good play. 
Gets to the ground ball for Hollisbrook line. Flips it near side. Anderson closed out well again by Johnson. Looks to attack Johnson. Bumps heads near side. Forced to give it up. Corbin dancing behind the net. Oh. Gets the step on Shivel. Trying to draw something from behind. Anderson shut down. Good recovery by Shivel. Now a step down shot from Torgerson. Is well wide. And a good foot race win there for Timberlane behind the cage. Condon the sophomore with a heads up play. Boy, they needed that because they need to stop this, uh, <laughs> this momentum shift that's uh, occurred here on offense for the Cavaliers. They got a couple of good breaks, a couple of good uh, ground balls out in the midfield and uh, kept the pressure on. Five minutes gone by already here in this fourth quarter. Good Shirest. rest. Harassed by Cook. Gives it up for Marston, who's well out of the cage. Near side, Shivel, head down. Oh, good move. Did he get a timeout? Yes, he does. Good thing. They were offsides. Timeout. Coach Blaska, first timeout either way here in this second half as we near the midway point of the fourth quarter. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Beals Insurance, locations in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance. We get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. Also by MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising is the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Also by New Hampshire iPhone Repair. The, excuse me, New Hampshire iPhone Repair. Six locations in New Hampshire and on now on the seacoast as well, visit nhiphonerepair.com. By the New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit nhtomahawks.com and also girls.nhtomahawks.com. By the Dead River Company, a full-service heating provider committed to keeping New Hampshire warm with propane and heating oil. Learn more at deadriver.com. And finally, by the Bean Group and Roger Howe Real Estate, your local professional for all types of real estate, residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, call 603-247-1583. Nick and Astis with Roger Howe. First round action. What's on the line? Well, a trip to Saturday's quarterfinal. The winner here faces the winner between St. Thomas and Memorial Central. That game underway as we speak. Coming up after the game, full tournament scoreboard headed your way as well, part of the post-game coverage. Hey, let, let me just interject here. I, I, I've been thinking about this the last few weeks. Uh, Memorial Manchester Central, they came up with the 12th seed and a 7-11 record this year. Good for them. Yeah. We've been waiting for a Manchester team to start picking things up and uh, pull it together and, and be competitive, and darned if they didn't do it this year. Good for them. Finished up as a 12 seed in a tough, deep division, too. Yeah. Some of the highlights, they get road wins at Keene, at Alvern, at Kingswood. They beat Trinity, beat Kennett, beat Nashua North. Mm -hmm. A D1 opponent. Hung around at Nashua South. Roger 8-2 the final. So, yes, all in all, no matter what happens today, a good season for Central slash memorial or memorial slash central however you want to want to phrase it yeah. all right we're just outside the midway point fourth quarter 10-7 timberlane they have never trailed they led by as many as six early in the second half their lead was trimmed to as short as two trying to go back up four if they can score here jerry will oh my over the right shoulder of looter coach blaska pumping his fist watching his senior Turn in one of the best performances of the year. He's got six goals. <laughs> and now an 11-7 lead is on the board for Timberlake. Oh, and he McGarry had him up along the head again on this. And uh, McGarry saw the, uh, the, the gate that he was putting on his grill, and he had to load up a little bit, and that was just enough to let Gary power through and get his hands extended. Uh, Gary's got to keep that stick down. He's got to keep it across his body and his chest of his uh, 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 attackman, and he, he's got to start making some movement with that stick. You can't put the gate down up around the helmet. Meanwhile, Colby, another face-off win for Hollis Brookline. He's been keeping the Cavs in the game. 
But the clock now is starting to become a factor as we head towards the six-minute mark. They never made a touch, so it's no uh, over and back here. Timberlane going to get to it. Condon along the near sideline. Connor Sanborn trotting there with him. The Hollis Brookline defender. Now Jerry backdoor for George. Oh. Spins and fires and scores. Wow. Jerry able to get loose. Wanted to make sure he caught it right out there in front of the cage. Took an extra second and then slips it by Luter. Now celebrating with his boys here. 12 7 Timberlane. <laughs> this attack is just on fire today and what a nice play. You know, he, he, he could have done something tricky there. He could have done it behind the back and, you know, gone to the uh, to the goalie's right-hand side. But, nope, he just, uh, as you said, he just made sure he had the ball, just twirled around. And, uh, I mean, it was just him him and Luter. Uh, just a simple play. Got simple two play. goals now, Roger, both in the second half. Both timely goals for Timberlane as well. You know, this kid's been borderline unbeatable most of the game. Colby... Wins it himself, flips it over to Roy, and now the attack trying to set up here for Hollis Brookline. So we tick down towards five minutes. Really now a two front war for Hollis Brookline. They got to beat Timberlane and beat the clock. Yeah. Yeah, it's not often we call a game where the faceoffs are so lopsided. Shot there won't happen. Anderson tried to go upstairs. Marston ready with another save. So lopsided, and the other team is finding success on the field offensively. We've seen a lot of games where J.J. Right. Murphy or Cole Frank have dominated, and the, the score shows it, but not here. Speaking of Cole Frank, we'll see the Pinkerton sophomore face-off specialist. Saturday, kicking off a doubleheader, D1 quarterfinals on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Pinkerton, a sixth seed in the D1 tournament. Maybe a dark horse. Going to take on Nashua South, who had an outstanding year at Stello Stadium. We're underway at 11 a.m. Saturday. And then, later in the afternoon, the defending champion BG Cardinals will take the field at Stello Stadium. 3.30 start against Bedford. So, quarterfinal doubleheader coming up Saturday. Oh, nice. Starting at 11. Oh. There's George on a back door. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> beautiful feed across the crease. George with the hat trick, and Timberlane starting to put this one to bed now, 13-7. Wow, and, and I think Hollis Brookline was just asleep on this. Uh, they, they were lazily getting back into the hole, uh, and uh, there's a one-on-one -on -one play. Nobody uh, is playing the backside here, and he just finds George just strolling through. So Jerry to George. We've said that a number of times this year. We sure have. Those guys have been a big part of the program, big part of the championship run that Timberlane went on last year. They came a final, uh, short in the final, of course, against Portsmouth, but really put the program on the map, Roger, trying to get back to that, that championship game and perhaps a step closer tonight if they can hang on here with four minutes and change remaining. Their largest lead is now back on the board. 13-7. Yeah. Oh, this one too strong. Flies over the head of Torgerson and turned back over to Timberlane. Yeah, going back to your uh, promo there for Pinkerton and uh, uh, their game against South. Um, any of you Pinkerton NHIA lacrosse historians out there like Jay Delanoy, the head coach at Riviere, Pinkerton alum. When was the last time Pinkerton was in the sixth slot mm. in the play? Oh, look at this. All the way. It's oh, Bowman. Behind the back, Nick. Flipped it over to George, who's having himself a big second half. Everybody getting in on the party now. Oh, my. George with four goals. Bowman with four goals. Jerry with six. If my math is right, that adds up to 14. Timberlane now doubling up Hollis Brookline. 14-7. Ben, this has got to go on our leader. This is a this is a sweet one. Just a sweet one. Mm. Man, I like it. Bowman to George. George with a little flair. He must have heard you, Roger, earlier when you were talking about the fact he hadn't scored in the first half. He's come alive here. Four goals since halftime. Yeah, this attack has just worn Hollis down. They've and now just three in a row down. posted by George as well. Meanwhile, Corbin knocked off the ball, scooped up by Paris. 
Timberlane takes it away yet again as we head towards the three minute mark. Yeah, this attack has scored every single goal today. Not a single goal from the midfield. Up ahead, Shaw trying to be the first midfielder. <laughs> as if on cue, the senior though ends up wide left. George Good hustle behind the cage. Geez, my ego tells me I have such an effect on these players, Nick. I think you do. Jeepers. I think you do. We know they tune in. Meanwhile, Shaw going to backtrack here. Now I think Timberlane with one eye on the clock, right, Roger, as we hit three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, this is a possession game. They're going to – I would rag it here for an, about a minute. Oh. George is wide open again. Yeah, when they get down to two, they're going to have to keep it in the box, and then they're going to be restricted to uh, what they can do with the ball. So, High pass fired by Aiden Rowe, the senior midfielder, getting some time here late. Couldn't hook up with Corbin there. Another pass that has sailed away against – or away from the Cavaliers here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, they look tired, Nick. They yeah. just look tired. Leaving it out all, all out on the field yeah. here, especially these – these seniors who are going to see their career come to an end. Yeah, especially Cook. I mean, Cook and uh, Roy in that third quarter, you know, they really stepped it up and put the energy back into the Cavaliers' offense. The good news for all this Brookline, they'll get Cook back. Just a sophomore. Meanwhile, somebody shaking up there on the far side. Another big collision. That's Batson taking his time getting up for Hollis Brookline. And a little wounded, it looks like, is Austin Patnode as he jogs, jogs over to the home sideline. Yeah. It's been a physical game. We've said that over and over here. In fact, I dare say it may be the most physical game we've seen this season. Yeah, you know. At least in my opinion. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm reflecting back. I mean, the. I'd have to think about it, but this one is uh, coming to mind here. Again, we've seen bodies on the. On the ground, penalties taken up near the neck. Just before halftime, we hit two minutes now, fourth quarter. Go through the archives here real quick. I know we had a couple of games that uh, we had a lot of penalties. Mm. Um, you know, both the Portsmouth uh, games we did that week, uh, Derryfield and, uh, and Timberlane, they had, a, had a, quite a few penalties. Only one each way tonight. Officials have let them play. Meanwhile, Shaw... Turned in a pretty good game. He's got another clear. He's going to go to the hole. I think he wants a goal for himself. He's oh, going to get knocked be down from behind, and the flag flies. And Shaw still has it somehow. Took a whack from, I think, every player on the field for Hollis Brookline. There's two penalties now. Yeah, or two penalty flags on the field. The clock is now stopped with the whistle. A minute 24 to go. Yeah, let's, let's see what official Bethke has to say. He definitely got a push on Shaw. And uh, Roy's going to head to the box here, too. He might have had a slash, and there was a bunch of numbers there. I really didn't see the slash, but. All right. So Got a push against Roy and a slash against McGarry, McGarry. both against Hollis Brookline. Yep. That'll, that'll close the game out. Minute 24 to go. Second EMO. For Timberlane, they cashed in on the first possession of the second half with a man up. They look to do the same here. Largest lead on the board at 14-7, but don't let that fool you. I think it was closer most of the way. I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if, if an out of towner, third. right? If an out of towner takes a look at just the box score, it may not tell the whole story. Yeah, well, I mean. Once they get halfway through the third, they're going to think this was a pretty even match, which, you know, mm. the third quarter brought it a little more equal. George with a step down, and why not? Wow. A picture-perfect second half for the senior. All five of his goals have come since halftime. Four of them in this fourth quarter, and Roger, he's now scored four in a row. Four straight. Uh, that That's, uh, that's going to surpass uh, Mr. O'Neill from... Uh, Portsmouth? From Portsmouth, who scored three within, what, a minute, tw two, minute Less 22? Uh, I think uh, yeah, that you're right, you're right. That sounds right. A minute 20-something. Yeah. Yep. A couple yep. of weeks back. But, boy, George now has scored four in six four minutes, minutes, right? Uh, I got 553 for the first and 108 for the fourth. So that's yeah. uh, about a Basically about a five minutes, you're yep. right, a little under. Yep. Not bad. Not bad. We'll take Not it. Not to be overshadowing his teammate Jerry today. Six goals to lead everybody. Meanwhile, Johnson picks up the ground ball. 
We get a whistle from the trail official. Tom Furley saw something there. Going to give it to all his Brook Lion as we move inside of one minute remaining. Coming up after the game, full post game report, recap, highlights, stats, and a tournament scoreboard. All coming up in about 40 seconds or so. Meanwhile, still loose. Johnson gives it a kick. Newman gives it a scoop. Fires off the back foot. His teammate Shivel plays it off the bounce. The big sophomore lumbering towards midfield. Trying to get rid of it. Back over to Johnston. Marston calls for it in the middle. And we're down now to 20 seconds. Timberlane. After a scare in the second half, they come up with a big fourth quarter. And they're going to win this one going away. 15-7 is going to end up as the final. Timberlane on a hunt for a return to the championship game. Going to get a step closer onto the quarterfinal Saturday where they will take on the winner between St. Thomas and Manchester Central slash Memorial. Good game here tonight in Plastow. Timberlane, though, the better team in the end as they win it 15-7. Big, big effort by the seniors. Tonight, six goals for Ethan Jerry, five for Eric George, and of course the junior Braden Bowman chipped in with four goals of his own, a number of saves in cage for Brady Marston. All in all, though, a team effort as Timberlane buckles down in the fourth and win this one 15-7. Yeah, they just, uh, you know, in that uh, make or break point in the third quarter where Hollis Brookline was on a tear and scored four, and we've said it all along, and, and you know, lacrosse is a game of runs, and that was their run in the third to really kind of turn the momentum their way. Uh, and with the exception of uh, Roy's uh, goal at the beginning of the first, uh, or excuse me, beginning of the fourth quarter, uh, they just put the gas on. They, 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 they stepped down and they did not play bad lacrosse. Uh, I didn't see uh, a single error in that fourth quarter. Um, and uh, it paid off. And uh, that attack, just by looking at the scorecard, they are lethal. 15 goals out of that attack. All right, coming up, full recap. On the other side of the break, stats, highlights, and an out-of-town tournament scoreboard as well, all on the way. Timberlake, a winner 15-7 over Hollis Brookline here in the first round of this 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Tournament here on Friday Night Lights New Hampshire, presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. The New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, Summer and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford.
for Goffstown and Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with the Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of the Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's, it's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. Well, Timberland's a winner, 15-7. Ends up being the final as the Owls head to the quarterfinals. And we'll take on the winner between St. Thomas and Manchester Memorial slash Central. Nick and Astis, Roger Howe with you. Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, Game of the Week. First round coverage here presented by Beals Insurance. Had a 2-2 game through one. Ethan Jerry put Timberland out in front first. Hollis Brookline's Colin Corbin. Tied it about midway through that first quarter. Braden Bowman got his first at the three-minute mark. Put the home team back in front. And then with five seconds to go in the first quarter, Andrew Torgerson tied the game at two. Timberlake dominated the second quarter. Jerry got his second goal early. Bowman got goals number two and three. At the midway point, and then with five minutes to go, Jerry lit the lamp again for the hat trick. 6-2 Timberlane. At halftime, it looked like the home team was going to roll early in the third quarter. They began with possession. They began with an EMO. And just 20 seconds into the second half, they get a man-up goal from Bowman. Junior gets a hat trick of his own, 7-2. And then a moment later, an even-strength goal by Jerry. Stretched the lead to 8-2. That's when Hollis Brookline seemed to wake up. Connor Penalt cook Scores his first of three third-quarter goals to bring his team within five, back within five at 8-3. Cook second, makes it 8-4. And then at the five-minute mark, third quarter, Jacob Roy is heard from to make it 8-5. And then after a lengthy play, Cook ends up with a transition goal to score the hat trick and bring his club back within two at 8-6. Timberlane, though, with a strong finish to the third quarter. Eric George, the senior, scores his first to make it 9-6. Jerry, another, his fifth, comes with just 21 seconds to go in that third quarter. 10-6 home team going into the fourth. And then one last push by Hollis Brookline. Jacob Roy gets his second about three minutes in. 10-7 at that point with about nine minutes and change to go. But, but that was all really Hollis Brookline had at that point. George and Jerry take over for there, from there for Timberlane. Jerry gets number six at the midway point, and then the final six minutes belong to George. He scores four in a row and sends the home team off into a celebration. 15-7 ends up being the final. Six goals tonight for Jerry, five for George, all in the second half. Bowman with four all in the first half. Brady Marston? Only two saves in that first half in net for Timberlane, but came alive in the second half, Roger, and yeah. ended up with how many? Yeah, he ended up with uh, 12 total, but uh, the big uh, part of his game was five saves each in the third and the fourth quarter, which was when the attack really turned uh, on him from uh, the Cavaliers, and uh, he stood tall. He he. He mucked down in, and uh, he made multiple saves back-to-back -back, uh, uh, a couple of times in that second half, and that sure paid off. It equalized what Colby was doing at the face-off circle for Hollis Brookline, which he, he was just dominating the whole game. And although we have two no-face-offs, 
uh, due to a penalty and uh, uh, change of possession, or, or excuse me, a, um, a technical uh, foul. Uh, he was dominating uh, with 16 uh, uh, faceoffs to um, Timberlane's four. Mm. So that's the game right and there. And how about Luter for Hollis Brookline? His final game in cage, the senior did all he could to keep his team competitive today. Yeah, he, he had a total of eight saves. Uh, he looked a little little shaky, I think, in the first quarter. He threw a couple of riding or uh, clearing passes away. Uh, but, you know, he also did a couple of uh, uh, back-to-back saves, uh, you know, down in tight. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's kind of the difference in the game. I mean, I think Timberlane just had better quality shots here, uh, especially, uh, you know, <laughs> in the second half. Uh, they didn't seem to have a lot of uh, shots go out of bound. And, uh, you know, w- what they did put on Looter, they, they ended up uh, capitalizing on. All right, out of town scoreboard. All first round scores in Division Two. There's a play in game tonight in Division One as well between Concord and Sal Hegan. And of course there's uh there's plenty to get to with Division Three as well. But but let's uh let's start I guess with D two. We know Conval has advanced. They're the seven seed, they knock off Cole Brown Northwood in a good game, seven six. Conval will be on the road in Manchester Saturday to take on perennial power. Dairy Field. Yeah, I got nothing after that. Uh, you know, the uh, the Twitter sphere is very quiet tonight, uh, and uh, every one of these teams out there has an active uh, uh, Twitter account, but we're just not getting it. And you know, it's quiet when Joe Marshallena and Alex Hall aren't tweeting. So, well, Joe's here with us, and he's he down on the field talking with Coach Blaska. So we give him a pass. Yeah, but he's a he's a classic retweeter. <laughs> classic. All right, we get a look at. A couple of well-behaved dogs down there on the sideline with the Cavaliers as they uh, look to get back on the bus for that long ride home one final time in 2022. So Timberlane going to survive and advance. They'll take on either St. Thomas or Manchester Memorial slash Central on Saturday. We will be in the Gate City for a doubleheader. D1 quarterfinals. First game, 11 a.m. Pinkerton on the road at Nashua South. That's a rematch from a little over a week ago. And, of course, Pinkerton, so many years in a row, either in the championship or winning the championship last year, bat out in the semis. I think they're on a little bit of a mission. And, uh, and that one will be very fun to call. Again, 11 a.m. Pinkerton at Nashua South at Stello Stadium. And then we hang around for a little while and then give you BG in Bedford. As Bulldogs look for the upset against the defending champion Cardinals, that game comes your way at 3.30. So again, Saturday, Pinkerton at South at 11, Bedford at BG at 3.30. Yeah, that uh, Pinkerton South game is clearly the best, uh, best, the most competitive game I think we have in the uh, quarterfinals uh, for Division I. Um, Bedford, BG. Uh, if Bedford comes out and does uh, to BG for four quarters what they could do to them uh, for the first two quarters when they played them in uh, Bedford, uh, that could be a different outcome. But uh, they've got to have everybody in sync on that game. Um, we don't know, uh, and this is very un, uh, unlike uh, Coach uh, Smith up at Concord. He's usually right on the uh, scores after that game. That game should be over uh, up in uh, Concord between uh, uh, Sauhegan and the Tide as the play-in game against Exeter. Uh, and then you've got, uh, you've got the uh, Londonderry Merrimack game. And mm. uh, I spent a lot of time with uh, uh, Coach um, uh, Samson? Samson from uh, Londonderry at the JV tournament this past weekend. And uh, he's got his guys ready. Uh, he he thinks that they're going to be able to take Merrimack in that game, and uh, uh, you know he he had his practice plans in place, and he's looking for a good uh, good showing. So you know that could be a very interesting matchup as well. Yeah, Merrimack's been kind of a a pleasant story. Yeah, right. And well, not not a whole lot of uh, prestige with the program, but yeah, I they've mean, uh, they've been competitive and have a chance to get to a Final Four. Yeah, and I mean I. Coach Miller, Brian Miller from Merrimack, out of Division One, he would get my vote for Coach of the Year. Mm. He has brought that team along, and they have made the playoffs, and they do have a real chance. All right. We've got Ben Beals here working behind the scenes, About as time he, he always did something does. Down there. <laughs> he's, got, uh, he's got a final for you, Roger. What do we got? Final score, Concord 6, Sauhegan 5. Wow, just like this, 
like the season. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, what a couple of weeks back. Yeah, and, uh, that was a close game too. Yep, yeah, this one is as close as it gets. Six five Concord. So the Crimson. <laughs> it was seven six. Uh, yeah, well, the last one we did. The Crimson will play top seeded Exeter on Saturday. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but well, you know that he, more lacrosse is always good, right? Uh, more. Huh. Don't tell that to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Want to thank. The athletic director here at Timberlane, Angelo Fantasia, doing a fantastic job. As usual, we appreciate him going out of his way. His staff always taking care of us here at Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Speaking of our crew, our one-two punch, the two videographers handling the setup and bringing you the action behind the lens. Of course, that's John Barron and Craig Incardoni. The director is the man behind the curtain. Back in the Beals Insurance Studios in Bedford, Ben Beals doing a great job as usual with the replays, the transitions, all the magic. And of course, speaking of magic, how about the unseen hand, the big man in the big chair, executive producer, Steve Beals, always invaluable to our operation here. For my partner, Roger Howe, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> My name, Nick, and ask this saying so long. Timberland a winner, 15-7, final score, final time over Hollis Brookline. This has been a presentation of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division II Tournament right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, presented by Beals Insurance.